Okay. There we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, going to be doing a VOD review here. This is going to be Peptoplasm Gold Lewis. Thank you for joining me here, Diamond Mew. I have no idea what the hell this character does, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> up against uh, Tower Soul. Uh, first things first, though, because this is the VOD, or the first VOD review we're going to be doing in over the next little while. Uh, hopefully going to do more. I want to go over some things that are just important to keep in mind when you're reviewing a VOD or like analyzing your play in general. Uh, so this is just like stuff that's helped me. First thing first is, you know, when you're watching a VOD, you're trying to look for what you did wrong, right? Like that's what you learn from. Uh, I think yeah. it's very important to classify things into the failure types. Uh, the four main ones I go for are uh, like, was your mistake a issue of high level strategy or like out of game information kind of stuff like oh my game plan was wrong or you know like oh i'm going to punish this move that i think is minus 20 uh it is actually plus two that is wrong information uh the next type of fault is moment to moment decision making where like you know you had the right info you just picked something wrong <laughs> and that is probably one of the most common ones uh, and then the last like main one is execution. I think it's really important to keep execution errors separate in your mind from decision making ones because it, it you know there's a lot of situations you can look at and be like, "Oh yes, I tried to do this here. Shame it didn't happen." <laughs> yeah, can't get a lot of insight from that. Mhm. Mm uh well, the insight, well, I guess specifically why I like splitting these like this is because the way you approach fixing them is completely different. High level strategy is, you know, like out of game research, moment to moment decision making can be, you know, like breaking down the situation or just like testing different things in matches and execution is the like, okay, go into the training room hole. <laughs> yep. Uh, final one is kind of like a bonus one, which is just situational recognition. Like, were you not aware of the situation you were in and how can you look for it in the future? Mm hmm. Um, other stuff in this quick little pre-rant thing is win conditions. Uh, always try and look for, well, I guess think about before the match and look for during what your win conditions are in the matchup, uh, like what your goals or your character's goals are, you know, like where do you want to stand? Um, for example, is Milia, my win condition is getting someone with a good knockdown and throwing a disc on them pretty straightforward yep. uh for someone like kai it's probably more having them at like mid-range in the corner you know just stuff like that yep mm -hmm. uh, and this could also change matchup to matchup oh yeah for sure uh and speaking of which the other important thing is to think about what your opponent's win cons are so that you can do your best to avoid them <laughs> Otherwise, mm -hmm. just normal, like, uh, spacing stuff, like, where are you standing, where do you want to be standing, and is there a difference there, uh, what are your opponent's ranges, and then just, like, trying to pay attention to adapting, like, what adaptations you made, what they made. Um, I think a lot of people ask how you practice adapting, and everyone seems to give a different answer, because I think there's just, like, different things that work for different people. For me, the thing I've found the most helpful is to go do VOD reviews and pay attention to when patterns change because you're like training yourself kind of in slow motion to be like, ah, yes, this happened here. Uh, and then, oh, look, he stopped blocking low or whatever. Um, and then as your brain gets used to noticing those, it then can start pulling them in in real time in matches. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay, though. Anyways, uh, going to go ahead and start this now. Pre-rant over. So, I think that Rathsort was really, quite honestly, kind of weird from Soul. That he backed up. Yeah, I'll go back well, to it. Well, so, like, here, uh, Gold Lewis's buttons can't really contest much of Soul Soul's buttons, except for, like, like even 6P at round start doesn't, like, fully deal with Far Slash. So, I'm kind of surprised to see Soul just back off. And not press buttons. I wonder so if, uh, we did. Or, go ahead. We did play uh, a lot of games. We played like I want to say ten games or something. So okay. I feel like maybe at this point, what it was is that 
uh, at the beginning of the round, I've tagged him because probably because either A, his timing is bad, or B, uh, he doesn't know what button to contest me with. But I've tagged him with uh, okay. far slash. And so I think, you know, he, rather than trying something else, went the safe route because he didn't know yeah. what to do. All right. But uh, in that case, it's good recognition for you to know that he doesn't want to press buttons. I'm going to run up and do stuff. Yeah. I would have never done that if I didn't think he would be scared. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, keep that. And yeah, early burst coming out, so you know you know that if you get the knockdown, you can push it harder there. Yeah, I think Thunderburning there is like really strong, but I think I would have just jump blocked instead of pressing a button. Yeah, against Soul, um, sometimes you definitely, like, his reversals in particular, you just have to give so much extra weight to, because, you know, Slash mm -hmm. is nearly unwhiff punishable, and H, if it hits you, you're taking, like, huge chunks of damage. So jumping in on him with things that aren't safe jumps are always hard. Um, it, the, uh... the drone did cover the 5k decently well, which is uh, definitely, like, the initial problem, but... Yeah, he yeah. Just, he went for it to stuff. Yeah, but it, at least in my case, I find that if I throw a drone and just follow behind it, even if I get hit, the drone will cover me most of the time. So I just don't really throw out buttons. I just let them press into me, and they get counter hit by drone, and then I get a knockdown. Yeah, sure. I definitely should have been you know more uh, behind it. I got a little too enthusiastic, probably frustrated, and I just <laughs> wanted my turn back. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I think um, jumping in the air isn't necessarily the bad decision because it can bait reactions can and bait make them outside. forget about the drone. I think it was pressing the button. Yeah, was bad. Um, as actually on that note, what button did you press here? Uh, probably dust. Yeah, uh, <laughs> dust is really good. Do you have to press it that early for it? Uh, you have it's to press like, it at, at about the peak of your jump, more or less. Yeah, it's probably a little too early. I don't know. Okay, yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Oh, I think you actually got a whiff grab, actually. Yeah, but that was an input error. Fine. I meant yeah. to do dot, I'm sure. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's one where, like, it didn't actually change the result any, so. Mm -hmm. I could have like, thought no. maybe he was going to jump at me. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I am actually going to rewind slightly until we're back in, like, close to round start range. Okay, so right here, I probably should have started with this, especially right after the mini rant where I talked about it. Um, what, do you know what the, like, the ranges you want to try and be at in this matchup are? Like, obviously it's very difficult for Gold Lewis to position by his choice. Like, I think that so, that is kind of what he's yeah. at. Yeah, the, but... the truth is, is that as soon as I, like, you know, I was, ex for example, I was expecting you to just ask me, like, what is my take on this exact situation, let alone sure. the range I want to be at in the match. And I don't know, you know, I... I'm always wary of like or self-conscious about the fact that you know I could be a whiner and I could be a negative, uh, which is why I value guys as your perspective. But when I look at this situation, I think to myself like, I don't really know if I have anything that can beat anything that Saul has yeah, in this scenario I, right there. It definitely like Gold Lewis in particular is strange because he's in a very very good spot if he like knocks you down with the right thing mm -hmm. but yeah like in neutral it definitely seems rough um, i got far slash like the thing is is that when i'm in this situation i go can they stuff my far slash no yeah. okay well then i'm actually all right at this range so, I, I looked at the uh frame data uh your far slash is tied with souls in uh startup mm -hmm. so it technically should trade on round start but also, Soul's Fire Slash on round start distance, if you micro walk back, whiffs. So if you want to like kind of stand just outside of his Fire Slash range to force him to use other buttons, or he has to like run up and do stuff, which lets you stuff him. Okay, so if I just walk back a hair and do Fire Slash, I might make him whiff his Fire Slash. Yeah, you, you, like, you have to walk back, slightly delay, and then press your button to get him to whiff and then counter it uh, into the whiff punish okay that's really good to know because yeah i can't tell you it's like when i play this matchup it feels like once i know 
or once I know that they're going to be pressing far, uh, far slash at the beginning of the round, I just like back dash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. fair. Um, you I actually, I see. Watch out uh, if you are doing that. There's kind of a rock paper scissors there with like um, them doing success, for example, or uh, I don't know, probably like dash two D, depending on if your timing is a little bit off. But yeah, it yeah. at least gives you like options at round start for sure. Yeah. Mm. And I think against Soul, it is one of the better things to do because you slightly walk back and you don't straight up give away space by like air back dash or back dash. Yep. But you put yourself into a slightly better position and see what they want to do and you can react to what they do. Yeah. And then obviously there's not like they're not going to be able to punish the recovery frames of the back dash if, if I if I just walk back instead of dash yeah. back. And if they want to actually punish you for that round start, they have to run at you and press stuff or press a really long range button like 6S, which is really minus on block. So they have to cancel into stuff. So it's they, it's they have to pr press a much more committal button rather than a low commit poke at, yeah. at that range. A lot riskier, especially because, you know, far slash could lead into like, you know, uh, a back pressure typhoon and then knock down yeah. and then you know gold lewis can cook yeah i assume mm -hmm. that this match is one where uh well okay i assume that most of gold lewis's matches honestly are ones where you just kind of have to accept that you will lose like two-thirds or more of your neutral interactions and you just have to make sure that when you get your win you push it as far as possible um yeah so like if you can find both damage and there's like one specific setup with i think it's the like the two four eight the backwards half circle up one uh, on yeah the air side hit. swap uh i don't think it side swaps um it well just, like, the two four eight uh going back yeah two four eight does side swap on okay. hit uh, on the, the low eight. hit okay yeah i'm talking about the top hit um i know yeah. that you can do yeah. that into drone and it's just like real shit okay uh, yeah <laughs> so like trying to find ways to push that as hard as possible is probably going to be super important but yeah, yeah gold lewis i don't think really exerts space control pressure in the normal way because yeah, yeah he has like behemoth and far slash and far slash can be low profile which does require a commitment but um yeah i assume okay so soul I'm going to talk about him for a second, as though 6S does not exist as a button. <laughs> okay. Uh, in general, uh, I love Soul... this. I love this beautiful fantasy world we're going on. Right? I know, right? Um, <sighs> but yeah. So in general, Soul does have to approach you. Um, okay. If he has the life lead, he can like sort of chill back, like maybe against Gold Lewis. But one way or another, he kind of has to commit to an approach. Whether that is running at you and pressing far slash, you know, you can stuff him on the way in before he gets there. Um, whether it's night raid vortex to make, to like whiff something, or I guess to force a whiff on the way in and then punish. Whether it's bandit bringer and like a jump at you with a good jump button. One way or another, he doesn't have the greatest range, mostly. Again, 6S is kind of this uh, uh, yeah, far far button. Let's um, let's just forget about so, Kara Fafnir. <laughs> well, Kara Fafnir is also like a big commit. Yeah. In that same way. Um, big committal option. It's almost like I know actually. I know is like, you know, she either has to commit to like some sort of hover dash at you, try to make a low poke whiff, or she stripped big trees in, but she doesn't really have control for mid range outside of the you know dash under a bull by everyone including Colt Lewis HCL um, well yeah I mean you know when she's at full when she's beyond your reach you know she typically just does note and then gets in anyways you know true always pushing forward um note I I assume it's Gold Lewis you can shoot it on reaction depending on where on the screen she is like vertically but mm. um yeah in that same way for the most part soul has to commit to one of those to approach the thing about soul is just that his reward is so fucked that risk reward <laughs> is just like thrown out the window but 
what you can do against Sol is try and figure out like how he is approaching you and stuff that and force him to cycle to one of the less safe ones like Night Raid. Um, okay. In this game in particular, he has 6S, which covers that hole fairly well. But if you can make it whiff, then it's like, you know, not great for him because he can't cancel it and it has an okay amount of recovery. Um, yeah. And he has to do it kind of at like tipper range to be... Um, okay, how do I put this? So if he's running at you, right? And he's yeah. trying to stop you from stuffing him on the way in, he has to be using the edge of it. So you yeah. can like move back or jump over it and make it whiff. Yeah. And then you have like a different rock, paper, scissors where Soul is forced to commit to something. Um, you will notice again in, in a lot of these situations, uh, Soul definitely like has the advantage. You just are supposed to make it hurt way more when you get in and we're ignoring Soul's age volcanic viper. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he has a pretty good reward, too. But yeah. I... Th <sighs> the Milia brain in me says, oh, you just make him chase you and force him to whiff something and then punish that. Uh, that is because Milia has, like, just super fucked up mobility. <laughs> yeah, you're incredibly Lewis mobile, you know. It... Have. I yeah. think mm -hmm. as Gold Lewis, what you need to do is stand when possible. Because again, Soul kind of controls the spacing with the higher movement speed, but when possible, probably stand just out of range of 6S, because then he either has to dash in and press that, which is then he has to cancel into something that's probably unsafe. Like if he goes into Gunflame, then you can Gatling him. If he goes into Bandit Revolver, then you can just hit him after blocking it. If he goes into. I don't think you can cancel into Night Raid or Fafnir, actually, so never mind. No, can't do either of those. So he, he kind of uh, has to, like, pick something off of it. Mm -hmm. I actually like, in this matchup, standing just outside of Far Slash range and just accepting that I'm in 6S range. Okay. Uh, and just committing to, I will stuff 6S if he wants the 6S. Sure. I sure. will counter, or I will whiff punish everything else. And to be honest, uh,. He, uh, Goldless has a lot of disjoint, a fair amount of disjointed moves. 5k and 2s both are like mega disjointed against lows. Yes, that's right. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the hitbox on 5k, but uh, like, you know how he stomps? The whole bottom corner of that is no hurtbox, just hitbox. So yeah, if someone's really. coming in low, you just step on them and they die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, they're wow. both, I wouldn't say, like, committal, but, like, they're both, they're not, like, jabs, because they, they're both, like, 10-ish frames of startup and decent amount of recovery, so you have to be intentionally pressing it to counter-poke a button that they're pressing. Uh, and, uh, another side note, you can actually counter-poke with 5H, the entire coffin is a hurt box with no, or a hitbox with no hurt box. Oh, damn, really? Okay. Yes, the entire... Thing. Also, uh, actually, this is a good thing to talk about, so let me rewind a bit. I don't know. I'm using a different media player, so I don't know what the normal hotkeys are. But so this is actually sort of what we were talking about. So Soul is right here, right? Yep. At this range, if you, like, just down back in place, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Maybe not the best idea because you are in the corner, but if you do, Soul has to pick something fairly committal to get in because he either runs at you stands here and presses far slash and if okay. you press far slash first then it hits him uh he stops back here and tries to counter poke you for doing that which is what he goes for uh he does night raid vortex which runs under and then if you block it you get to just murder him yeah super unsafe mm -hmm. or the other like alternative to this move here is uh gun flame which is the other like okay. low committal option but See, he doesn't really have a super, super safe way of exerting, of like stopping you from doing something. The safest thing he can do is just like run up to here and not press something. If like, he were to do, if he were to do gun flame at this range, would I have time to jump over and punish him? What would be the yeah. go? Yeah, um, that's how I'd respond. Most likely, yes. Uh, I do. You, know you definitely can. Sure. Okay, I was gonna say as Milia, if I block gun flame, or sorry, if I, if he does six s past the range where Gunflame catches Jumpstart, 
I can jump instant air dash over and do a falling jump S to counter hit it. So yeah. as far as just normal jumping, you probably could. Um, in yeah. this situation, what you want to do is be looking for this success or this success. Because you try to jump just to get out of the corner here, right? Yep. Which is why your attention isn't focused on the success, so you don't think to press a jump or a falling button here. But like if you see this, okay, I actually, do, you I do, press you the do. wrong just, one. I, right, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, definitely like, not job. One hundred percent would have hit. Yep. Yeah. And that is like exactly what you want to do against this move. It also uh an interesting note with the uh, Golus's air buttons is jump heavy like forces you to the ground very fast. So it's very easy to whiff punish with as an air button air to ground button. Oh yeah, interesting. If you j jump over a button, you do have to be wary of accidentally canceling land canceling the move and not getting the hitbox out mm -hmm. if you press it too low. But it's yeah. really good to be like, oh I jumped over something, I'm gonna press heavy. Drop on you, get a combo. Yeah, I typically, I, I need to be better about using it just because, like, it's a pinch quicker than dust. Uh, I typically use it when I think somebody might be going under me most of the time. Yeah. But yeah, that definitely would have been a better button in that instance, or even if for whatever reason, like, you know, my reactions are slow, I could have probably done with, like, you know, jump K. It would have at least hit him. Yeah. Okay. Um, real quick, as we go into this, are you familiar with the concept of fuzzy jumping? I don't remember. Uh, I, I can't recall. Is that when I'm holding up back or no? Uh, sort of. Okay, so I'm going to start this by saying I fucking hate the term fuzzy in all things fighting. <laughs> it's the Because it means something different in every single every fucking time. game. Yeah. Every single one. Okay, mm -hmm. so the relevant thing here is in Guilty Gear, for five frames after either leaving Blockstone or waking up, you are throw immune. Okay. While, like, actionable. So, what this means is, against opponents who aren't specifically targeting it, you can, uh, let me do, 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 so you could say, down back here, for, like, one, two, three, four frames, and you'd block this. Uh, but if you then, after the meaty would have connected, tap up back, before you're throwable, then congratulations, you have just option selected both the strike as a meaty and the throw done as fast as possible. Okay, and the only thing that would give me in that instance is the overhead then. So, um, okay. It would be specifically a delayed button that catches yeah, the Yeah, a delayed meaty. Oh, okay. But if they do that, then you have a couple frames to play with on wake up and, you know, Correct. door closes, window opens, yada yada fighting games. <laughs> So the idea the idea is is that when you do when you do press up back if they meted you you're gonna you're get already block blocking. stun. Yep, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So like if you tap up back here, cool. Nothing happens. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that is just like I, I saw the situation and it's extra important against Soul because you know he just fucking murders you off of either one. <laughs> so. Yeah. Right, ooh, yeah. Mash out there. Okay, uh, yeah. I think we kind of talked about this. I'm also going to yeah, stop uh, pausing and going quite in that in depth on stuff, or we'll be here all night. Mm -hmm. uh, I am going to try and focus on the interactions at this range, though. Because, like, you know, on this one, here, Soul is trying to. Uh, oh, God, help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the hotkeys on this media player. But okay, so here you're in that same situation where if he's going to run at you, he has to commit. But because yep. you have the drone, he basically has to commit really hard to like night raid or something. Uh, and even then, actually, because the drone's slow enough, it'll just catch. Or it. just keep backing up yeah. and give me screen space. Yeah, like he can success here, but then the drone just flies in because it doesn't fucking disappear when you get hit. So oh no. Yeah. Um, like it, this situation for Soul is actually really bad. Like, he basically can't commit to any button because he just gets hit by drone afterwards. So the best he can do is take a trade. Yep. So, like, I think his best option is actually just 2Ding and getting hit, and then you both get up again, or, like, he air dashes over the drone. Yeah. But that puts him into the corner, so he doesn't really want to do that. You'll probably see a lot of people jump in situations like this. Um... Yeah, he just went for... So this DP, there's no way in hell it was a reaction to you jumping. Um, this DP is him being like, 
oh god, he's running up and he's about <laughs> to safely start pressure. So he's I doing that in to... anticipation of me, like, maybe running up and slashing pressing him a in, like, yeah. a couple yeah. of milliseconds. Yeah. One, two, three, four frames into your jump. <laughs> this is not a reaction. This is a fucking get me out of this drone. <laughs> Please. Panic these. Yeah. Yeah. And he um, still gets hit by the drone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah so just like if you can find positions like ways to get that position set up and you understand the rock paper scissors there which is like the one thing that gets him out is throw because you're yep. fully immune while throwing but like you know you're running up with the drone you can counter hit the throw it's kind of your turn to just like run shit um yeah so as long as you can understand the RPS there and like know how to press your advantage, then that is something you should be trying to set up as much as possible. Yeah, um, I should have just, if I were to redo that situation, I would, you know, stay a pinch more behind the drone and just give him some opportunities to squirm to see if something like that would happen before sure. I started putting on um, more pressure. Another thing you can do here, honestly, is if you ran up and like actually at just about the range where you jumped, I think, I don't know for sure Gold Lewis's ranges, but if you just like do a 2S here, it catches him trying to press a button to stuff you. Um, and then there'd be a little gap and then the drone comes in in case he tries to do something afterwards. And mm. then the drone puts him in block stun and then you're like, all right, I'm running up while the drone has you in block stun. I'm going to press a think... slash or something. Personally, I think instead of 2S here, I think 5K is better because it's jump cancelable. Oh, so wait, it is? You, <laughs> oh, yes. my God. Okay. Yeah, I was you, going for you 2 run up because of the disjoint, but... Yeah, it, 5k is a little worse disjoint, but you run up, press 5k. If it's blocked, you just uh, uh, jump cancel air dash, or just jump cancel. Drone covers your jump cancel, and you get a free high-low. That's sure. pretty great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't know it was jump cancelable. Or, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying I didn't know uh, it was jump cancelable. Yeah, no, it is so good. That does not look uh, like a jump cancelable button. He's fucking stomping <laughs> the ground. <laughs> well, he stomps I mean, you know, the ground and then jumps. And then he pushes off. Oh, yeah, right. he pushes off he the stomp. You're right. He should only be able to super jump off of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically, uh... Yeah, I mean, he just is it, this is some... Things, right? Well, so, here's the thing. If you do uh, a jump cancelable button and do a non-super jump instant air dash, your jump heavy won't come out, and you'll hit the ground. If yep. you do super jump air dash, it will hit, like, very low to the ground. But it will still come out. That's so if you want to... It is actually really important, because you, you could do, like, really good over, overheads off of 5k super jump cancel heavy. Their super jump air dash uh, jump heavy. Gotcha. This, so yeah, uh... I I Skyfish do. was probably a bit psychotic in hindsight. <laughs> uh, um, actually, I think I think it's, I think it's a fine. Mm. It, uh, it's not getting you out of the corner, but I, I think that probably the overall tale of this match, honestly, is going to end up being dual one. the getting back from slightly past this positioning interactions. It's like neutral, okay, you're in this. Soul's running at you, what do you do? This happens, you kind of blow him back with a revolver, or with a typhoon. This situation again. It hits him, blow him back, you're in this situation again. So this is you just preempting, like, him even getting to the range to play that, like, Vortex, success, far slash game. Yeah. So I, I think it's fine. Um, it is just, you know, it has a higher risk than normal because you're in the corner. But, like, the only thing that Soul has that beats this is doing Night Raid from full screen. Uh, he could do dashing. super jump. I, he, I don't think... He can oh my do god, he can night raid under it? That's scary as shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, treat his night raid like it is one pixel above the ground. Yeah. Oh my god. Same with stroke. Yeah, It uh, it's super low profile. Also, in this situation, you probably didn't think of it, but you do have 50 meter, so just throwing out uh, a big special that checks a large part of the screen with 50 meter to back up if, oh, he night raids, I'm going to RC to cancel it and then Ooh. punish it. Block punish. Yeah, I, I, I lost, uh, what, as I was sifting through my matches trying to find one where I felt like I wanted your guys' insights, one of the critical mistakes I noticed uh, me doing was not RCing uh, 
Skyfish in a, in a similar situation. Yeah, especially uh, doing a committal option like this can bait equally committal counter options, and then you RC and punish their counter attempt. Yeah, they're not thinking that your committal counter is not actually a committal counter because you got meter. Mm -hmm. RC is so good as a, oops, I was wrong. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. but... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, also, so after this, it resets to, once again, that same position that I've been talking about. Soul has to run in at you. Oh, okay. Sorry. After this position, you are you move forward to take space and get out of the corner. You know, smart. You don't want to yep. be cornered against Soul. You die. Um, yep. But the interaction here is just, like, very standard. Like, walk forward, walk back, who's going to commit first stuff. And I think you recognize that he likes to success from this range. Oh God, I yeah. straight up do not know what you hit here. Uh, that was uh, forward, up, back, behemoth. Or, no, sorry, like what of Soul's buttons got oh. hit? Oh, right probably far slash for success. Yeah. So, good call out, and then yeah, it is time for you to run Oki. That happens sometimes. DPs. You do just, yeah. it's a guess. Did I think... Didn't well, the also, happens. well, also there, I think you should be safe jumping soul. Oh, can you save because, jump off this typhoon? Oh, yeah. probably with counter at the very least. Definitely on counter hit. On certain uh, combo routes, you can. Or I don't think it's certain combo routes. I think it's most, unless it's super prorated and he falls to the ground super fast. Gotcha. But in general, you can safe jump off of this uh, ending special. Just to make 100% sure, I'm pretty confident that you do, but are you familiar with the concept of a safe jump? Uh, a safe jump is basically like... I want to say you land with an air move like on the ground, and you time it so that if they didn't do a DP, you would hit them, but if they did, then you recover and you can block. Yep, yeah, right? exactly right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep, I just, I like to check and to make sure that we're not like missing anything <laughs> as stuff goes on yep. but yeah if you like here that... you definitely have enough time to safe jump mm -hmm. um and yeah especially against a character like soul or leo safe jumps are probably worth giving up the mix up for because that is the yeah. downside of a safe jump is you know you don't get real mix off of it unless you have like a left right safe jump yay million um, yeah. <laughs> but Boo, Milia. Like, run mix up. Then, like, running up and going for close slash makes sense because you have crazy frame traps. You've got, like, close slash behemoth typhoon if they respect the frame trap, etc., etc. So, like, yeah. yeah, whatever. Just guessed wrong in this situation. But there's a way to optimize it. Yeah, and that was just oops. Bad burst. Yep. Yeah. Well, that was a good call out by the soul. Um, I don't think it was even a call out. I think he just missed and then uh, just backed off just to see what is going to happen. Oh, actually, yeah, you're right, you're right. Well, just missed. Yeah. Got a pinch flustered. And... Here, I got you hit. Oh, oh, you tried to uh, punish the counter. Viper, yeah, okay. That's fair. Um, scramble situations like that, sometimes you're just like, oh shit, you should die for that one. Also, I think in the corner, in the general, generally there, your objective isn't to try to hit soul it's to get out of the corner so here when he drops the combo i would think i would opt to run forward or air dash over rather than punch soul yeah. i feel like i feel like the thing is those you know if i did try and do that in that situation wouldn't it be over and he could easily just like uh k me or something yeah okay so he did recover from the volcano or the uh was it? Vortex really fast, so like you can't really do a whole lot here. But I think at least like running forward and blocking, or like I don't know. I think the the punish attempt was fine, but I think I, I would like prioritize. Maybe I should have done forward back uh, typhoon to get him. On. That knocks him like nearly full screen. I don't think it would have reached in time if far slash didn't. Um, I think so. I think more or less what Tyler's trying to say here is just. You tried to like mash out here, which makes sense, but also it is generally less risky to try and just bail out by avoiding okay. the opponent rather than going through them. Yeah, because like okay. here, if you just super jump and block, he can't, he can only air grab you. 
And if he presses K, like, you block it, and then you're in block stun, but you're not dead. Yeah, you're just back in the same situation, and you get to try again. Okay, yeah. I get what you're saying. And also here, you still have meter. If, if right here, you did BR Seed Rift Forward, you tag him with the BRC hey. to give yourself more time to punish. Dude, I always forget about BRC shit. It, I, I think I it is a that. really... It's a really good whiff punishing tool if you're like... You you have the meter to spend and you're like, I want to whiff punish this move. Just let them whiff it. BRC drift in. And you could hit with any fucking button you want. Yeah. yeah. Just hit a quick it, 2P, 5H. Combo. Hell, I could have yeah. done. I could have done. Even if it would have been blocked, I could have done uh, front to back Behemoth Typhoon, and then you know REC mm. dash for the pressure. I mean, honestly, my preferred strat here is just to back throw him into the corner. It just reverses the situation, makes it really bad for Soul. Yeah, true. Yep. That's a fantastic option. Yeah, a little scared, didn't want to advance forward, and I didn't consider that choice. Yeah. To be fair, I, I'm i not too surprised that with Goldos' mobility, you would default to trying to mash out. Because, um, like, the likelihood of it succeeding is lower for a character like him with such low mobility. Even if the, uh... Yep, yep it do be like that sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> even if the risk is still lower to go for it. And, like, there, that was a good example of you're just like nope i don't want to deal with this you saw a whiff and you just tried to escape yeah yep. and <laughs> even on the trade it was favorable <laughs> yeah gold lewis behemoth typhoon be like that yep. okay uh, i'm so i don't think you did anything wrong here i do want to talk about the situation just a little bit though this is a fucked up situation <laughs> yeah um the ground is completely covered, and you go for a Behemoth Typhoon here, which, again, I don't think is wrong by any means. It would catch him trying to immediately escape the corner, but, like, just look at the amount of screen that Soul cannot move. In. <laughs> yeah. So your goal yeah. here is basically to try and see him jump and then tell him he does not get to do that, because mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about the ground. Yeah, but also... I Oh, okay. say, also, in this situation, once you have them cornered, uh, a viable strategy to win from this point on is ne not necessarily to, like, kill them, but just to keep them in the corner and counter all of their attempts to leave. Because yes. eventually, you yeah. rack up the damage. This is how... But, like, yeah. But I would say, like, here, he, he, like, basically can't go on the ground, so he wants to jump over... So you just wait for him to jump, stop that, and then reset the situation again to, are you going to try to ground escape or air escape? And then just 50-50 him until And to be fair, as Gold Lewis, one of the strengths you do have is it's not fast, but you do have the ability to cover both, as you can see currently on the screen with the giant coffin swing. <laughs> it's like if he tries <laughs> yeah. to jump IAD, he just gets clipped or you know it's a guard crush so he just gets launched back into the corner. that's that's exactly i was i was doing that preemptively for um inst an instant air dash and then yep. i figured if if it's you know tag him then it would just the only way it wouldn't have is if he like jumped up and back really far like super jumped back or something you know and then i could just uh jump slash if he was up too high Mm -hmm. And yeah, because like this is where you made the decision as he's walking forward. So again, like I don't think you did anything wrong here. I just wanted to focus on the situation in particular. Yeah, really um, analyze the, the advantage here. Mm -hmm. I do think that generally, like you didn't quite have the spacing on the startup for it, but I think that as Goldoas, you can probably move up close enough that the Typhoon also hits and still yeah. do the uh, you don't get to escape thing. Uh, for reference, this is what, like, good Kais do, is rather than getting you in the corner and being like, all right, I am going to try and commit really hard to strike throw mix up, they will put you at uh, where you're... They will stand where your drone currently is, and be like, all right, the fuck are you going to do? Press a button that hits me? Yeah. You got a, you got a slash that's better than me at this range? Doubt it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Slash 2H covers so much of it. If they do try and poke out, then they just get to whiff punish you, etc. Um, yeah, I yeah. loved the term back in Exerd uh, because you know he had Greed Sever back then, the big overhead. So you'd stay at like Tipper Greed Sever range, uh, and the Kai's called it the Rainbow of Sadness. <laughs> you don't get to leave. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay. And then, yeah, that is, you know, the super nice thing about that drone. Nice conversion, for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, because he had to back off, because you just set up the fucking wall. Um, <laughs> like, what's he gonna do? Jump in? This is like a couple frame window to both avoid it yeah. and not get droned. And yeah, great good combo. run up, glow slash, hit him with the low when he tries to jump out. Just general good stuff there. Thank you. Yeah, so this yeah. time Soul just opted to far slash. It'd be I just want to what double you did. check what it was that you did here real quick. And how I probably tried to do standing slash. Yeah. Well. Far slash. Okay, yeah, you were <laughs> one frame One frame. in putting your yeah. far slash. That's what happened here. Yeah, because if you both input it frame perfectly, it's a trade. Oof. Angry. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think here, the soul realized you, you just advanced on round start every time, so he's just going to try to stop you from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last time at round start, um, if you remember, you jumped forward and did jump dust, and he 6P'd it because he just like didn't commit to something. And that's fine. Uh, you will have to, you know, try and jump over the far slash or whatever and punish it on the way down sometimes. And then if he doesn't, he can just see that and punch you. But okay. yeah, don't be afraid to like take moderate retreating options because you don't, you really don't want to give up too much space against soul. Probably. Yeah, I mean th that's point. why I really like just micro walk back on round star against like every character because it gives me. Yeah, what frames Time is and space. What? What frames is 5H? Souls? Uh, no, Gold Lewis. Uh, it's, it's like 15 to 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> uh, 19. I, I, I was gonna see. Okay. Yep. Nope. Never mind. I was gonna say there's a chance that you might be able to just do the, the stomp on it, but that is not the case. That is more soul privilege. 6H. Hell yeah. Nine <laughs> frames. Oh, actually. You'll want to go into training mode and check the interaction between your micro walk back far slash and 6H. Okay. Uh, 6H just beats that. It does hit there. Yeah, I think. I'm, it, well, because you micro walk back and press far slash, you reach into it. Gotcha. Okay. So watch out for that because on 6H, or on counter hit 6H, like ground bounces and shit. Uh, and it's frame nine, so it just beats you pressing far slash even immediately. <laughs> so yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, so still very much, options. still very much. It's like okay, yeah, I, I lose at the beginning of the round, and you know my uh, option should be to just get in that range where you know but I'm playing around. You don't, you don't necessarily lose at round start, but his options are generally better than yours, and you have to do more committal stuff or back off and lose a little bit of ground. Mm. Yeah, you can still definitely, like, interact with what he's got, so it's not like an auto-lose, um, but yeah, it it is weighted in Soul's favor. I, I really do think that it's probably best to just assume that your neutral interactions are weighted two-thirds towards your opponent, and then you just have to make sure that you get two-thirds times the damage when you hit them. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I would also like to say, uh, Behemoth Typhoon just randomly getting hit by them that was a chunk of damage. Yes. So it like. Also does on block. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Weird combo. <laughs> this. Okay. Yeah. No worries. I was going to say this is sort of that range I was talking about before, but there is no way either of you expected this to be here. He 100% fucked up like a revolver input or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he messed up the revolver input, but then proceeds to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah what this means is that he does 5k dash, dash. button mm -hmm. not back back but presses yeah, just... the dash button <laughs> yeah I, that's what i do for my dash cancel buttons oh yeah combo. same here for all my air dash stuff is milia um okay so do 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 knock down and yeah just Oh, actually, jump to try and meet him. Sure, guess correct. Yeah. On the strike throw there. Uh, this is actually sort of yeah. After he blocks this, you're in a similar range to what we've been talking about so far. Like, but it's also is very much in play here, <laughs> and you're in the. But gap. it's also slightly in your favor because you're plus. If you Im you can here immediately input 
a forward to back typhoon and counter hit him pressing a button. Which well, I that's what I want. Try. Yeah, I was a yeah, little yeah. late. Yeah. yeah, but even then, he didn't press anything. Mm-hmm. Also, but... I cannot believe this actually whiffs. That's fucking <laughs> yeah. like, look at <laughs> this is frames <laughs> from hitting. Like, <laughs> yeah, moon walks on out of there, mm-hmm. and, and then, then yeah, get punished. Gets... Oh, actually, well, not fully punished. Yeah, yeah I burst like into immediate verted down. <laughs> because this. What this does for this matchup specifically is Soul now no longer has the choice to hang back and has to do the approach mix up. Yeah. And I think the burst was also. I think the burst was good because it's obviously last round and you don't want to. You don't really want to burst later into a combo anyway because you're basically going to be dead. It gives you meter, it pushes them full screen. And it gives you options in time mm-hmm. because yeah. you're in the corner. The location of the burst is definitely risky. I'm actually... Oh, no. Okay, it did come out as gold burst. I was going to say I'm amazed it came out as blue, but it didn't. Never mind. No, yeah, no honestly, this is a habit that I have. I don't know. You know, I'm sure this is something that, you know, situationally is good or bad. Depends. Uh, but whenever I get gold burst, it's almost always an accident. And I immediately do burn it down. When I get yeah, that's I honestly know. like when it hits, burn it down is probably just super good. It doesn't fucking go away when you get hit or anything either. Yeah. So like worst case scenario, it kind of trades. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably it, don't uh, do it all the time, but as a default option, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I like it's completely safe to do. He he can't punish you for it. Uh, the so it's one fine. Exception is again throw. Well, yeah. well, no, I meant, like, in general, he can't punish you for oh, using sure, sure. Burn It yeah. Down. He has to run in, and then you interact with him one more time yeah. before Burn It Down does something. Okay. More stuff. This oh, is actually... OTGs? Yeah. That's fucked up. And it just pushes him through it. That's fucked up. <laughs> Alright. But okay, so let's yeah. see. We are now back in this range. What does the soul do? gonna run in oh I actually tried to run in and, and just like block block because you've been stuffing yeah. him so consistently so that's not too surprising and then yeah just like sees what you do yeah good old mid-range foot good stuff oh good stuff. almost this is exactly what we were talking about earlier where you're just like oh it didn't hit or it did whatever i'll press rc either way <laughs> yeah <laughs> So this is the exact moment where I said that my brain kind of shut off, and I was like, "How do I get around this? Uh, this just slash?" Because <laughs> yeah. I was just we were just backing up and you know dashing forward, moving back, just slash, think... slash, slash, whiffing slashes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you know his far slash is going to be whiffing, you can committally press uh, five H because the entire coffin is hurt box with a uh, hitbox with no hurt box, so. He'll, he'll just run into it and get hit. Yeah. Also, but yeah, it I is do. risky. I don't yeah. think that this is necessarily your brain turning off. Uh, it probably feels like it because you're you know doing the same option a couple times in a row. But what this is is like missed mid-level reads where you're not like hard reading your opponent. But you know, you're, you're playing basically footsies essentially. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, I think he's going to move forward. Oh shit, he walked back. Now I need to evade because I was wrong. Oh yep. shit, get soul over here. Oh shit, I missed. I need to evade. <laughs> and you're both just like, you're both scared of getting hit by the other person. It's round three. Each of you can do this much damage in a combo. Um, like their entire remaining life, etc. So you're just both like running for your lives. <laughs> he counter hit you trying to poke. Yeah, this actually, oh, you air blocked. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this specific situation happened pretty early on, like right at the start of the match, where you air blocked something, landed, and pressed 2P. And it worked out that time. Not this time. <laughs> if, if, you ever, if you ever air block something, don't try to press. Because if you air block something, you are in so much block stun yeah, it's rather like, than what, like the normal amount. Landing? Like 19 additional frames of landing blocks done, I think. I might, my number might be wrong there, but it's like a shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. I bet that means in those situations where, like, I don't know, uh, 
I catch somebody uh, jump blocking the like down forward up typhoon. Oh, they are. <laughs> they, it's you're like crush. plus thirty. It's not even fucking. Yeah, that's not even like normal landing blocks. Son. That's a guard crush. That shit is blocked up. <laughs> <laughs> Also, like, here, like, you air block something and pressed your fastest button, 6 frames. He pressed a 15 frame normal off of plus 2 and still hit you. Yeah. And, like, that's yeah. just so how we'll screwed up that so is. So, one, he can move. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, <laughs> 20. <laughs> Well, I guess, uh, sorry, minus six. So, yeah, like 14 frames before you. Because you did a six frame yeah. button. But, yeah, this shit, uh, air block puts you so much extra block stuff. Yeah. So, basically, never press after air block. Okay. Especially as Gold Lewis. Um, you're a member of the six frame club, same as Milia, where the fastest button you have is frame six. If you remember what I was saying earlier, uh, throw immunity is five frames. If you get thrown on the same frame and attack would land, throw wins because it checks first what this means yeah. is if they do a correctly timed tick throw it is impossible for you to mash out of it with a normal oh boy yeah yeah that's uh, scary gold lewis zato milia faust anji i think and one other character have that in this game it's fucking rough <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you just kind of have to commit to jump well, right, your I your lowest so. committal option is jump. Yeah. Or fuzzy jump, I guess. Yeah, I think you tried to press there because uh, far slash to far slash, but you just did it too late. What did you try and press here? I I think that I was worried that he was gonna like uh, maybe walk up and throw me after, and I probably was gonna try to. Yep. Yeah. There. You I, I so, did that because I thought he was going to stagger and just walk up and throw me. I sure. wanted to stop him. Yeah. Far slash to far slash is like an 8 frame gap. So like, if you want to stop him from doing that, you have to commit to your uh, 2P just before anything happens. You just have yeah. to press it this... and assume he's going to be far slash to far slash. So this is specifically anti-soul tech. Um, okay. But so his far slash, or I guess not tech, but just like situation breakdown. His far slash is plus two. Um, yeah. So yeah, if he resets into it, eight frame gap, you have to immediately press 2P. If you faultless the far slash, don't fucking press, it will lose. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Because it adds two frames of block stun, and then it just like trades with your 2P. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the other side of uh, faultlessing is, if you faultless far slash 5H, he really can't follow up very easily afterwards. Um, so I, I'm actually going to get to that in a second. So first things okay. first, far slash. If you block it, or if you faultless it, just probably just fucking don't challenge it. Um, the soul's mix up here is he does far slash, far slash, which is a big gap. Far yep. slash, uh, slight delay, 6S? I, I don't know if he can gatling into 6S actually, but uh, either 2K or 5H which are small gaps that counter hit you for trying to mash out of the big gap. Okay. Um, if you faultless far slash, it does effectively nothing for like distance because he just okay. like moves forward. Gotcha. If he does go for the small gap option though, whether that's 2K, whether that's uh, 5H, whatever, um, then it just like shoves him back yeah, out okay. of range. So the mix-up there is, do you press something against the big gap, or do you faultless the small gap? Okay, okay. Also, in general, faultlessing far slash isn't the worst idea, because if you faultless, like, two far slashes, hit the 5 -H, his next 5H will just whiff. Like, uh, so you just push it out far enough that he has to keep pressing far slash, if that makes sense. So is the, is the like situation that I described, like, I mean, that's on the table still, potentially, that he could just drop his offense and just dash in and throw me. Yeah. That's always a possibility. Yes. The thing is, on defense, um, it is still a choice between stuffing the large gap, whether the large yeah. gap is far slash or run-up throw. Yeah, so that's what I tried to do here. 
Yeah. I tried to stuff the, the large gap. And yeah, just you just didn't you commit didn't early enough. Slightly late. That's why we're like breaking down this situation. Also because it's just a super common and kind of fucked up one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to make sure that you like know what the options on the table are, so that you can that's a, pick with that's like, exactly where I want to know. Yep. Yeah, but also, uh, if you are trying to mash, if you are going to try to mash out, I would commit to pressing two P and immediately inputting a Behemoth Typhoon. Just don't. Just assume your mash will hit and yeah. input a special afterwards. Yeah, yeah, because then I'll get a knockdown. I'll get way more value. Yeah. Oh, right, actually, this is something I didn't talk about at the start, but the other thing, it's like something of how I like to think about fighting games in general. Um, do you play any card games? Uh, not a bunch, no. Okay. Um, Alright, well, I will <laughs> attempt to explain this in a way that is hopefully still coherent. Uh, let me know if any of it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Alright. But so, you can think of fighting games as like akin to card games in a lot of ways you can only have so many things like in your mind at one time uh, the yeah. equivalent there would be like you only have so many options in your hand so many the mental stack hand. yeah oh, kitty please do not claw me or the chair <laughs> okay sorry but um what you can do with that and what like thinking of cards helps me with is the card itself can change um when you choose to do an option, you can either choose to do 2P, which is one card, and then try and figure out, oh shit, did it hit? Do I do the next move? Or you yeah. can think of like 2P426 Typhoon as like one card, one action, and just yeah. input that. Like your brain just makes one decision and you are doing this series of actions. Yeah, um, don't view them as a, as a you know, two separate things, just a combination. Yeah, and I think that uh, combining cards, basically, into one is a very important part of leveling up in fighting games. Um, the most obvious example is, of course, as you're learning a combo, at first you have to think of every hit of it separately, but eventually you just yeah. play the combo, or like half exactly. of it, and then see where it changes. Yeah, I totally see what you're saying. But yeah, so this I is think... just one of those where it, as long as you are picking an option, you might as well just pick the bigger one because either you got counter hit anyways and well shit yeah or, it's or... sort of the same thing with like 6p where if you press 6p might as well input a special any with it because you kind of have to yeah yeah with gold lewis that is definitely the case it'd be real cool uh man well anyways, so... i'll talk about milia later uh, basically you have to select the correct special based on whether it was blocked or normal hit or counter hit or you die <laughs> but... oh, yeah <laughs> or... it'd be like that yeah. and then just you know like i said at the very beginning you're both very scared here because either of you can just fucking kill at this percent health <laughs> yeah and that's what happened <laughs> What a he did. Soul did have meter, a meter and burst, so he could have burst out of one combo. True, true. Yeah, that is. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna rewind all the way to the start. That is the full match. So we'll just do like one last quick recap. Um, first things first, though. Do you have any questions or specific things that came up that we didn't talk about that you wanted to? Uh, well, one of the things I was going to ask is, like, when should I Faultless? Because I'm trying to incorporate that in my gameplay, but you kind of addressed it in terms of the most common situation with sure. Soul. Sure. Um, right. Soul, the, the reason we addressed it there is because he kind of breaks the normal rules, though. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Most of the time, what you want to do is, uh, let's see, let's see if I can get it to do a block strike on you. Let's see if that ever happens. Soul doing soul damage. Um, but okay, so while this plays in the background, say you are blocking someone doing uh, close slash, 5H, uh, like do you have like do you have a Giovanna string? Close slash, far slash, 5H. Sure, yeah. Thank you. That works. Um, so that's, you know, the close, like, uprising knee, the triple kicks, and then 5H is just like the big, big kick. Right. Yeah. So there's a couple places you can fault us in that, depending on what you want. You can fault us the very start to try and just like push them back at the cost of them being 
what, like plus five <laughs> instead of plus three on their fucking core slash? Yeah. Um, hello, kitty cat. Um, but the place that you'll probably want to use it the most, at least early on, is actually at the end of strings. Um, or right before the end of a string. So say you're fighting Soul, actually. That's a good example. Um, say he does uh, 5k 6s on you, and you just block it. Uh, and then he goes for Gunflame, right? Okay. If he's up close, the Gunflame will, like, frame trap what you're doing, and then he's either very slightly minus or a little bit plus. Okay. Um, however, if you faultless the 6s, then it pushes him back further so the gun that i can i jump for gun flame and yep you can you can get over it um another That's common really thing for out. like for the geo example uh if you normal block the first hit the close slash you normal block a couple hits of the far slash and then right at the end you start faultlessing um the geo will probably hit 5h to try and you know do something else on block yeah uh, if you shove them out at the last second they're five H whiffs, and congratulations, you have just forced a whiff punish. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. That is that is what faultless is for. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. That, I was and if you are going to die to chip, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Like> chip damage. <laughs> yeah, obviously, like uh, you know, you're getting uh, well, Gold Lewis, fantastic example. <laughs> I think I, I've I've burned many a meter uh, <laughs> doing like you know uh, they have no health left, and then I just hit them with like front to back behemoth typhoon, and I'm meeting them with it. Mm -hmm. So, you'll also see this specifically in a lot of higher level play, but dash up into FD, while not as, as important because you can still block while dashing, you can control your momentum a lot more finely by a dash FDing than dash and then holding back. So, uh, if yes. you're trying to if get soul... and you hold back, you slide... Um, yeah. If you're running and you faultless, uh, there's actually something to it that makes you slide uh, if you do the faultless a certain way. I don't know the specifics of it in this game. If you dash and then uh, down back faultless, you'll still slide. But if you're holding back and just uh, like flicker faultless, you'll like stop and then start walking back immediately. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Just it's a hard just a stop. way to control micro spacing, basically. Yeah. So like yeah. against Soul, you're trying to get him to whiff a far slash. So you dash in to make him want to press far slash, and then you just faultless to stop moving. He presses far slash, and you're not there, and then you press your button to hit him. Mm -hmm. So okay. you could use it to bait reactions. That makes a lot of sense. I'll try and incorporate that, and uh, that's very useful. I guess the only other question I have is, this game's ranked system is good for keeping people who don't know how to play together, I think. But when you get to the higher levels of it, I feel like it's super ambiguous, and I don't really know. So just asking you guys from your perspective, watching this, where am I at right now with this game? Since its ranking system is sort of unclear. I don't feel like um, VIP means anything in particular. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, yeah. I don't put much stock in rank systems in tower. general. Um, yeah. It's, I would describe it as, God, it gets me every time. While I was recording the video, someone joined the Discord call. <laughs> so every time we pass that, it does the little ding. But uh, I would describe it as, I think you have you like clearly have some fighting game fundamentals which, like makes sense obviously you've played them before um but just yeah. like don't know enough game specific stuff um i think that there are some ways that you can push your offense more that you're not doing i don't know what they are because i don't play gold lewis outside of that like yeah. jump we were talking about at the very start okay. um, but i don't know i i think that you're solid for sure um trying to think of where i would say to focus and that's think, a super specific question so take your yeah, time i i think one that can really help is if you learn learn your safe jump timing because like against a character like soul that has a dp if you run up you're always like in the back of your head thinking like what if he dps i have to like do something to stop it if you know how to safe jump you can just not care that he's dp and then worry more about how you're going to open him up rather than is he going to dp me okay 
Uh, it is also important just because Gold Lewis is a character who doesn't get to be on offense very often. Uh, because when he does, he fucking explodes you. Yeah. So the more you can stay in control, the better you're doing. So safe jumps are one where again you're like you're giving up the mix up a little bit to keep control specifically as like a guarantee almost. Um, Dual one. So finding places like that where you're like whatever, whatever, I will do the mix up once I'm in. For now, you get to fuck off and hold this. Uh, yeah, it's probably good. Okay. And even then, the safe jump doesn't like lose you that much of your mix up because you can still go uh, safe jump to low or safe jump into just overhead because behemoth typhoon or you can do like safe jump close slash into delayed low wait okay i you'd probably need a very specific setup um and i don't know if it has too much landing recovery but can you fucking safe jump with a typhoon <laughs> that would be so fucked up you can because i labbed it Oh, I yeah, my I can totally see doing that. They recovered it, like instantly. By the way, the setup was getting a wall bounce, the uh, Behemoth Typhoon wall bounce, put them behind me, do a very, uh, like, souls like really high above me, close slash, instant air dash, kick into delayed Behemoth Typhoon. <laughs> and they land, roll, and get safe jumped by the behemoth. That's <laughs> fucked up. I love it. Um, okay, uh, real quick, um, what is your short and long-term goal with this game, Pepto? Like, where? what are you trying to do for now? Are you trying to, like, understand the system better? Are you wanting to just, like, get win rate up as much as possible and then shore up weaknesses after you've, like, got to a point where you're in control um, well i know i know delta's coming back or you know delta's gonna yeah. be moving a lot of in-person stuff back online yeah. uh i want I'm to be able every week so <laughs> yeah uh, uh one goal that i do have in mind is that when you guys do start doing events online again i want to at least be at a point where i feel like i can participate on somewhat even footing you know i don't yeah. gotta win but i don't want to be in a point where like the discrepancy between me and you guys is very large right sure uh and i think let's say for some reason that never happens my goal with these games is always to just be sure like you know i want to get to a point where i'm really playing the game and i and yeah. to me there are so many hurdles between those spots because you need to know how to get out of certain situations you need to know the rock paper scissors of the yeah. scenarios and what tools you're supposed to do so i guess in the short term uh that's my goal is to just feel like i watch a replay and i have all the answers i know where i went wrong you know what i mean okay sure. yeah I, I i think you're de definitely like work on character or matchup knowledge would be that goal then yeah because like obviously knowing like souls close slash rps or far slash rps is like really important to the soul matchup but not generally like the whole game as a whole yeah what i think I was... you gave me a lot of perspective on just like how to think about uh matchups sure. and i'm definitely yeah. at least turn on that a lot. honestly i think that's generally the most helpful part of odd reviews uh unless it is like very specific character stuff that you're having issue with um I, I, the reason I was asking it in that way is because if your goal is to win more in the short term, then 100% what you should do is go lab out your offense, see the places mm -hmm. where you can push that the furthest, get the most damage, get the best setups, whatever. Uh, like find ways to combo into wall splat, do the laser super that pulls them off the wall, set the drone, and just run the fuck you, Oki. Um, yep. If your goal is long-term stability at you don't care too much about like i want to win right now then i would be like okay yeah go try and learn matchups specifically because every time you learn something about a matchup it will be applicable somewhere else at least conceptually like you know how souls far slash rps works now um therefore you know how a decent number of other like just stagger pressure situations work. Souls far slash is also like the only far slash in the game that's plus, so you know, a little bit different. But it's still like the same I, general idea as 
uh, other like advancing pressure starters, things like that. So as you like find each one, you'll get another situation where you're like, oh, I can you know apply this over here. It just will be way fucking slower. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'm the kind of guy who, you know, rematch the same dude a hundred times, even if I never win once. And what I'm searching for in that is just what am I supposed to do? How do I really start playing against this guy? So just getting rolled. It's not necessarily winning for its own sake. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, yeah, I would I would highly recommend focusing on, um, like, pick a character and just try and figure out, like, one or two common situations with them. You know, soul, far slash. May, uh, how the fuck do I deal Dolphin. with dolphins? Gino, God, I hate dolphins. How do I interact with her dash far slash? Uh, stuff like that. Preferably the like to interact with dash far slash. <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, All right. Like, well, as you build you so that up guys. over time, I think you'll be solid. I really appreciated this, and I've got a lot to uh, think about. And I, next time we do this, if I could ever slip you a replay, I'm sure it's going to be Zato. I'm going to be really yeah. happy for that Zato. <laughs> for sure. Oh, Zato is really interesting to me because I come from I like I originally played BB tag, and I look at Zato pressure, and I'm like, this is baby. You know how hard it is to see invisible left right mix ups. <laughs> Where, yeah, it, like, try blocking Zotto, but also Zotto can, or Eddie can suddenly be the point character and be doing an overhead low or throw at any given point. Yeah, Fuck I'm you. like... Dude, BB Tag's a, BB Tag's a meme game for sure. Like, in a fun way, but... Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, no no thanks. You guys you guys enjoy that. <laughs> okay, to be fair, I BB do Tag enjoy is it. very fun up to a certain point. And then it becomes that. And then it's like, if it's your cup of tea, great. If it's not, like me, then uh, I'm going to play something Stop! Else. <laughs> I've never been a fan of the super nutty. You know, I've always so, liked, you know, I, I need ragged. that tempo where even if I get my shit pushed in, I felt like I had my moments to, like, recalibrate or adjust. Yeah, even if I, I, I like the uh, the Guilty Gear, like, Exert and Strive specifically. It's actually why I don't like Plus R. Um, Killer Instinct, like that, they're... The characters are fucked up, but it's not like team game and or everyone has the kitchen sink fucked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I genuinely love super fucked up games. It's like <laughs> hilarious to me that it, it's not about why why do you have this? Why do they have this? It's how do you get your why do you have this <laughs> to make them cry? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, guys, well, I'm going to peace out. Thank you so much for this. Are you going to be, like, yeah, for sure. uploading this somewhere? Are you uh, recording yeah, I'll, it? Yeah, I'll be putting it up on my YouTube channel. Um, theoretically, tonight might be tomorrow. We'll see what happens. All right, sweet. Okay. Send me a link. I'd love to have it on hand. Sure thing. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. All right, good night, guys. Good night. Bye. Mm, wow. Yes. Okay. Well, that definitely went on for uh, oh, wow. longer than I thought, but this is why I was also talking about wanting to do, like, some with the group, and some where it's, like, just me and Tyler, and then I edit it down to, like, five or ten minutes afterwards. But... Yeah.